Welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking over a few additional things on the Microtech firewall, namely address lists, mangle rules, and a pastime favorite, fast track. So let's get into the content. All right, let's start off with something very basic to set up, and that is the address list. So what I'd like us to do is go into our IP firewall, and here we've got a, a bunch of cool <laughs> filter rules that we disabled, but we learned about in the previous lecture but you can see there's this address list tab. Now address lists namely gives you a place where you can almost add a group or a group of different IPs that you can associate with a name. So that is the address list. So if I click on the plus here, I could give this a name. I could call this something like DNS servers, and then I could put in an address here, 8.8.8.8. .8 and then I could apply that. And now I've got an address list object called DNS servers and it's got the address of 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 in it. I can hit another plus, and then if I click on the drop down, I can actually just click on that to reference it again, and then I can add an additional server if I wanted to. So there I can add 1.1.1.1. .1 if I apply that, both of these IPs now belong to the DNS server's address list. So the neat thing about firewall rules is we can actually reference things using an address list. So I could ideally do something like I could add my firewall rules. Um, <laughs> let's go into this top one first, and then I'll just enable this again. And then instead of using the destination address of 8.8.8.8, .8 I'll remove that and I'll go into my advanced field. And then I can select here in the destination address list, that group that we added, then I can apply this. And this rule was set to actually block ICMP traffic to Google, but now it's going to block it to two servers. So if I open up my command prompt and I do a ping to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, we can see that is timing out and the rule is getting referenced because we can see traffic hitting the rule. But instead of just the 8.8.8, .8 .8, let's see, can I ping 1.1.1.1? .1 and that's also timing out. So both of those objects or the DNS servers are now timing out because we're referencing an address list, which is really, really cool and beneficial. All right, let's look at something else. And this is now the mangle rules. So I'm going to remove these address lists that we created here. And then we're going to use mangle rules to dynamically get or create address lists. So mangle rules are actually very, very awesome. I love it. This is one of the strong points of Microtech for me. There's so much you can do with Mangle. And what we're doing here is really just the tip of the iceberg. Mangle you can use for stuff like policy based routing or route leaking. It's really, really, very strong. But what we'll just do is the DNS service that we just looked at, we're going to dynamically add them into an address list. So let's hit the plus on a Mangle rule. And then you'll note there's a few additional chains that you can select here. The most prominent chain that you'll be working with is the pre-routing chain, which basically says before any traffic gets routed by the firewall, before it goes into the routing table or before it's going to get routed, we're going to do certain things with it. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say anything going to 8.8.8.8. .8 we want to perform an action and we'll add the destination to address list. And then what we can do is create a, <laughs> an address list here. So I could call this DNA servers again. Let's apply that. And then I'm just quickly going to ping 8.8.8.8 because .8 .8 .8. let's see, is the address list there? No, it's currently not. But if I ping 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, we should see something get created. So there we can see it's dynamically created this address list object called 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Very cool, but very basic and <laughs> not something you typically just use. But let's do something better with this uh, pre-routing chain. So instead of just the DNS servers, let's take that out and let's change the protocol to ICMP. So now what this is going to do is uh, things that I am pinging. So let's create a new address list called things that I am pinging. And then I'm just going to say anything that's going to get pinged by the firewall, we're going to add to an address list. So let's apply this. Let's go back into command prompt and let's ping 1.1.1.1. And if I go to the address list, we can actually see <laughs> things that I'm pinging. So let's also try and ping 8.8.8.8 uh, .8 again. So it should add it to that address list. Let's ping uh, www.google.com. It should add Google's address there. So as you can see, we can actually do pretty interesting and cool stuff 
just by adding them to an address list because now we can reference this address list in a firewall rule to either drop the traffic, allow the traffic, or do whatever we feel like doing with the traffic, really. It's such an awesome concept. So that's address list and really the just the base of, of Mangle. This, this is going to go a lot deeper. Even in the next uh, section where we discuss QoS, we'll be working a bit with Mangle as well, where I'm going to show you, you can mark packets and then you could do things with the QoS, with the mark packets, with the Mangle rule. So this is awesome stuff. Um, okay, so that covers Mangle and address list. Now let's talk about fast track. Now fast track is a hot topic. A lot of people like it. Uh, and the reason being, if we look at a Marketic device, it obviously has a set amount of resources. So if I go into my Marketic, I look at the resources. This is a pretty small device, not a big CPU. Uh, it's got a single CPU actually, um, not a lot of memory. So stuff isn't that nice. So if I'm using firewall services on this Marketic, that can actually consume a lot or do a lot on the CPU load. So the more rules you have access or active on the firewall, the more strain your resources will take, especially your CPU. So if you've got a single core device like I have here and you're running multiple rules, you might start hitting that CPU cap and then you're gonna have some performance issues. Now what Fast Track allows you to effectively do is, um, in the previous video I mentioned, you can disable connection tracking and then the router just becomes a router. So Fast Track lets you select what traffic you want to just route. You don't want that traffic to pass through the firewall process. You don't want the firewall to look at what's happening with all of the traffic. It will effectively allow the router to mark the traffic as fast track traffic and it will just forward it. It will start forwarding the traffic. So there is some performance increase that you might see with this, but it's also um, pretty, I don't, I don't want to say dangerous, but you need to kind of know why you want to fast track the traffic because don't just think you're going to fast track everything to the internet and you're going to have super fast speed because now the traffic that you're fast tracking, it might not be referenced by your NAT and now suddenly your internet doesn't work at all. So this is more or less for traffic that you want to push on a LAN or WLAN or between Marketic devices. So we could say if, if the traffic was going between Marketic devices, we know we're routing specific networks between two sites. We could fast track that traffic so it doesn't need to pass through the firewall rules and then that traffic wouldn't be uh, doing anything on our CPU load. It would just be quickly passing the traffic off. But I'll give you a quick example of how fast track works. So here we've got a blank um, firewall rules. Well, I'm going to add it anything. And what we could potentially do is we can add a firewall rule. And then we could say any rule that we want to forward, um, let's say again to Google's DNS. So any traffic we're going to send to Google's DNS, we want to fast track connection like that. That's all that you need to do. Um, actually, let, let's remove the Google DNS thing and let's scroll down and there's something we can say connection states. And then we can say any connection state that's established or related, those connection states we want to fast track. So any traffic we're forwarding that's established or related, we will fast track that connection so that the traffic no longer like gets checked up on the firewall. And I can see it's created this rule, which is getting referenced. And we can already see traffic is being picked up by the rule. And we'll see it's also added some dummy rules here to just keep track of what is being fast tracked. And if you go to some of your other tabs, like your mangle, you'll see it's also created some fast track connection counters here in your raw table as well. Um, so just something to take note of. But now if I do stuff like um, let's ping www.google.com. We can see I'm, I'm still able to ping out, but now the traffic isn't effectively going to be looked at by, <laughs> by the firewall. So the firewall can't potentially block or drop any of the traffic. It's just being pushed out over that interface. So it's being pushed out from LAN to WAN without the firewall kind of interfering. And then that doesn't need to uh, put any strain on my CPU because all of the packets are just being marked for fast track. All right, so that explains fast track as well. And this is where we will end off the video. I hope it's been informative. And the next video will be doing a lot of natting things. So let's look forward to that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.